weather service. A tornado warning has been issued for the tri-state area. Severe damage is imminent. everybody this is Rob Pratt and welcome once again to the ever popular Tornado Watch 97 as we talk about the GTs who've been doing a lot of rocking and rolling lately and of course since we have last met there's a lot of action to talk about with the head man Gino DeMarco of course you've got Walsh, St. Ambrose and Tiffin and all sorts of good stuff and let's begin with uh, Walsh and once again uh, the GTs were up to a very dubious task coach. We sure uh, had our hands full with DeMont Skange came in as the third best rusher in the NAIA and uh, Walsh came in only with one loss, ranked in the top 15, and uh, it was a tremendous challenge for our guys. But uh, I think it was a night that offensively, defensively, and our special teams, we played as one, and we won and won in a big way. Uh, scoring record, 81%, uh, I believe, as far as seniors and winning percentage. Uh, Justin Myers, five touchdown passes in a single game. So the records just continue to be shattered this year. Well, in the last three weeks, yeah, we've seen uh, Justin uh, break the touchdown record, five and one game. Our seniors this Saturday will uh, play in their last regular season game at Reeves. They've won 81% of the regular season games the last four years. 17 uh, special young men who've come together and really changed the, the face of the program. And, uh, you know, when, when you talk about everything that's happened at Geneva, uh, the opportunity to go out and compete and compete nationally is is something that's happening week in and week out. All right, without further ado on Tornado Watch 97, let's check out these highlights. It's the GTs and Walsh on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Against Walsh in week seven, the Geneva defense was challenged by DeMont Skanes and one of the top ranked attacks in the NAIA. From the outset, the GTs proved equal to the task, limiting the high-flying Skanes to 72 yards rushing less than half his average. Geneva throttled Skanes, then pummeled Walsh quarterback Matt Jensen at will. Meanwhile, Melvin Cobbs and the Golden Tornado offense sliced through the Cavalier defense for huge chunks of yardage. Michel continued his assault on Geneva's record book with an 87-yard punt return for a touchdown. In the end, the GT sent Skeynes, Jensen, and Walsh home with a migraine, pummeling the outman Cavaliers 41-7. I love to watch the GTB sting and swarm defensively. Nothing quite like it. Now let's move along to uh, the cornfields of Iowa. Build it and they shall come. And boy, you sure did go 14 hours. You took plane, you took a bus, but finally you uh, teed it up against St. Ambrose, Coach. Yes, uh, we played in Davenport, Iowa against St. Ambrose. Uh, St. Ambrose featured the number three quarterback in the NAI and Chad Duffin, a tremendous talent. And again, uh, we were playing on the road uh, a long way from home. And our players decided last year that they'd raise money in the summer to be able to fly for part of the trip, and it was just a great experience. We went out there, had a super weekend, 
played together as a team and played in about eight inches of mud. It was <laughs> the most uh, interesting uh, field I've ever seen. And our guys overcame all kind of adversity, played real well, and came back with a big win. I got to ask you, listening to the game on the uh, Golden Tornadoes radio network, he hearing the voice of uh, Geneva College, uh, John Rambo, were there really cornfields and, I mean, farm equipment and all that stuff that he talked about? Well, I, you know, I, I think within maybe a mile of the <laughs> stadium. The stadium actually is a very nice uh, set. It's a municipal stadium, and uh, but they play a lot of games on there, on that field. And, uh, it just, like I said, looked like somebody rode a tiller to the field. That's about right. it. In the mud, your team had to adapt, and again, uh, once, it did, once again they did, as you will find out now as we roll the highlights on Tornado Watch 97, the GTs in St. Ambrose. Geneva College weathered a 48-hour rainstorm that rendered the worst field conditions the GTs encountered in over a decade in a week eight mud bath with St. Ambrose of Iowa. Matt Savannah started the scoring by punching it in from two yards out to put Geneva up seven to nothing. Tim McGraw bought it in from five yards out while Jason Gill added a 39 yard field goal to close out the first half at 17 to zip. Gill was perfect twice more in the second half while Mike Holleran added a 30-yard touchdown reception to his credentials. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Golden Tornado defense found the sullied surface to their liking, limiting St. Ambrose to just 150 total yards, only 22 of those on the ground. The poor conditions could not stand between Geneva and victory number seven as the GTs win dirty 30 to six. Thank goodness for those frequent flyer miles. Uh, boy, talk about a long road trip. You're going to have more of those or, or less? Well, every year our conference dictates that we play one crossover game that far away from home. And, Actually, Rob, I think it's a good experience for our young guys. They get a chance to see another part of the world, if you will, Davenport, Iowa, in this case. Uh, our conference stretches from Pittsburgh all the way west to the middle of Iowa, and we play a majority of our games in western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio. So it's a, it's a really good uh, structure the NAIs put together. Talk about seeing the rest of the world. Uh, Danny Gardner, a uh, senior on your football team, went to Russia? Yeah, Danny had an opportunity to, uh, to go to Russia this summer as a as a missionary and to be able to minister to those people who are in great need. Uh, and he saw some things that, uh, you know, uh, a young man at his age seldom sees, poverty, and was able to minister the love of Christ to those people. Uh, but what you'll see on a football field is a kid who just loves playing. He's got such tremendous enthusiasm, uh, plays with uh, passion, and he lives his life with purpose. So, you know, Danny is one of those young men that you'll remember in coaching for a long time. Passion and purpose, you heard the coach, and now the pride of Elwood City, Pennsylvania, he, of course, Danny Gardner, our player profile on Fox Sports Pittsburgh and Tornado Watch 97. Uh, Danny Gardner, to me, uh, is the epitome of intensity. A young man who wasn't recruited out of high school because of a broken leg came to us as a walk-on, would fight with me about the uh, opportunity to play. I can remember one time kicking him out of a JV game because of intensity. And uh, over the years, he has matured into not only a fine football player, but a great leader. Uh, when I look back on a coaching career, Danny Gardner is definitely going to be one of those stories where uh, a young man came in as a boy and left as a man. Playing for Coach DeMarco is exciting. He's uh, very... Um, 
encouraging coach, but uh, what I love about Coach DeMarco is he can uh, get us excited, get us fired up when we're not ready to play. He, uh, the way he goes about it is exciting. He's a, he's a very good motivator, and uh, we know what, what's great for playing for Coach DeMarco is we know that if he had the opportunity, he'd love to put the pads on and go out with us. Uh, this year we asked Danny to do something that uh, few people could do, and that's to change positions. He was an All-American last year at linebacker, and we asked him to move to strong safety where he's going to be covering more receivers and running backs. And he's made the transition, and, and he's playing well. And that's a very difficult thing for a senior to do. This year I made the transition from drop linebacker to strong safety. It's been a pretty easy one. It's the same position except for it's on the open side of the field. And the only obstacle I had to overcome was from covering uh, running backs. I now cover receivers. So the defense is uh, is good or better than last year, and it's looking forward to a good season. When you ask me about Geneva football and uh, the biggest. The biggest thing I always remember about it, it's, it's going to be my relationship with Coach DeMarco. Because coming in, I had broken my leg my second game my senior year. I didn't have much film. I had been off of football for over a year. And I, I walked on at Geneva. And I proved to him that I was a player. I proved to him that I wanted to play. And I, I loved the game of football. And, and uh, once, once I proved that to him, he, um, he sat me down, gave me a scholarship and said he wanted to find a position for me. Um, first year it was special teams and then it moved on to about four other different positions and uh, strong safety and linebacker, the different linebacker positions. But uh, the biggest thing for me is, is uh, my relationship with Coach Mark on how it's grew, how it grew and how, it, you know, remember back and laughing about the times we wanted to rip each other's heads off, but now how we're close friends and how they, we both respect each other's position. You asked me a question about Geneva football and what it is. Geneva football is real. It's the real deal. It's hard to know as football. And um, you look at Geneva College and you think NAI is school. There, there must not be some real tough football going on there. But I look in my huddle. And I look at the kids around me on that field, and I'm in amazement. You know, a lot of a lot of kids could very easily be playing Division One, but they chose to they put, chose Geneva College because because of the atmosphere, because they want to be on a winning team, and uh, it's 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 hard nosed. It's good football, and that's what I think of when I think of Geneva College. Another reason why Geneva College is truly special is because of the individuals. Enjoyed that thoroughly about a senior, Danny Gardner. What a really neat individual. I want to talk to Dave Layton now, once again, Director of Missions of Geneva College. David, good to see you back on Tornado Watch 97. Thank you. What separates Geneva College from the rest of the pack in Western Pennsylvania? For yes, here comes the key word, excellence. It is an excellent college, and as a graduate of Geneva, I think I can be a testimony to that. But uh, Christian College, I think, is what sets it apart from the other schools in Western Pennsylvania. You know, as far as the growth aspect, we talked a little bit about it the last time you were here. And of course, if you drive by and you see all of the new construction that's going on, you can definitely realize that even though they're celebrating their 150th anniversary, they're not resting on their laurels. They're looking ahead to the next millennium. Uh, but as far as the enrollment, it just continues to skyrocket. Any thoughts on why, other than the obvious? <laughs> Yeah, I think a uh, big part of it is additional programs, new programs. We continue to look at adding graduate programs. We continue to look at what it is uh, that students are looking for in an institution uh, such as Geneva. Uh, new undergraduate programs, new majors. We introduced uh, uh, special ed as a major this year in our education program. We are introducing a human services major. We're looking to introduce in the future an exercise sciences program for phys ed majors. So it's a constant uh, new program thing as far as uh, what we offer students. Well, we all know that education, just like every 
uh, aspect of life, very competitive, especially when you're on the, the college level as you are Geneva. But the thing that I think that really separates uh, Geneva from the rest of the pack, it's individuality as far as one-on-one. -on -one. And the idea is someone's character, as long, along with their mind, is the key as far as putting the whole package together by the time they enroll and by the time they uh, graduate. Geneva was just recognized by the Templeton Foundation as a character building school and that's one of 139 institutions in the country and uh, that's a that's a big impact on a school like Geneva and where we're located uh, being a, a Christian college in western Pennsylvania uh, it's important for us to be able to uh, offer the students uh, the type of education that I think is important to them when you look at the cost of the college education these days and um, being able to provide them with faculty who care about them as an individual as as well as a student who fills a seat in their classroom is important. Something very unique about this time of year too is the fall. You know, you've got Gino and the GTs doing their thing down at Reeves Stadium. You've got the beautiful soccer field, the baseball field. The thing that I'm so excited about Geneva <coughs> is the emphasis as far as building character and the sports programs, how far they have come. And looking forward to Matheny Fieldhouse being rocking in a couple of weeks with basketball getting set. The men are going to pay 30 games this year. So really, the two can go hand in hand, and you can continue to maintain that good quality student athlete along the whole process. That's very true. And I think as far as um, the size of Gene Geneva itself lends itself to students being able to, um, who want to compete athletically in varsity teams, uh, who, those who have that opportunity or that desire, it's important for them to be able to know that they're going to play. All right, now let's talk about uh, prospective students. Uh, right now, a lot of seniors out there are getting set to make some decisions, and some big decisions. And uh, all I know is that uh, this has got to be the right one for a lot of people out there because of this track record. I mean, you look at the success rate and where this college has gone. Let's talk about how they can get in touch with you and your fine department over there as far as possibly enrolling in Geneva. We like students to visit our campus because we think that has the uh, uh, selling point that um, students are looking for. Being able to come and experience it, the classroom setting, the professors, talk with them individually when they come and meet with uh, uh, different departments. They can talk with folks who are experienced in their field. They can get an opportunity to uh, meet with an admissions counselor, tour around the campus, meet with a coach, whatever it is they have the opportunity to do that and they can do that by calling our office uh, at 1-800-847-8255 1-800-847-8255 all right so uh, make that call before I let you loose uh, the Westminster games coming up you of course a Geneva graduate you know <laughs> all about that and there's a possibility I mean this could be the final time as they and Finley are, are moving up to division two that's a pretty special game isn't it it's a big rivalry and it'll be sad to see us not play them in the future but it'll be an excellent game to watch well, a no, little fun here, but uh, lucky for them. Anyway, it should be a great ball game. We'll come back, talk to uh, Gino DeMarco as we continue on Tornado Watch 97. Again, thanks to Dave Layton from Director of Admissions at Geneva College. We're right back in a few moments on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Always nice to have a chance to get caught up with Dave and chat about uh, one of my favorite spots in Beaver County. Yes, picturesque College Hill and Geneva College. Let's talk about Geneva College and the campus. Tiffin last week, a scoring record shattered and uh, just a nice day for the GTs. Hey, we went out to Tiffin, Ohio, traveled. Uh, Tiffin's one of our rivals in our Mid-East League. We play them every year and it's been a very, very good rivalry. Uh, Saturday we went out, played very well and Justin Myers, five touchdown passes, new school record. The Geneva offense of 1997 sets the school scoring record. So it was a very eventful day. We played well and came home with a victory. What is it in your mind, other than great coaching, that so many of these young guys have just stepped it up, I mean, right off the bat? I mean, this, this, he's a kid. I mean, this guy's a kid, Justin Myers. I mean, just doing incredible stuff for you. Well, I think, uh, you know, the bottom line is at Coaching 101 is that Players win games and coaches lose games. So um, you want to go out and recruit the best kids you can find. And Justin Myers, you know, we've talked about him before. Uh, very indicative of the type of player we have at Geneva. Uh, a winner, a kid who makes the commitment in the offseason, and uh, somebody who's performing on the field. So uh, he's having a tremendous year. Well, a lot of happy people, as I said, up at uh, the campus while they were listening and enjoying this one. Check it out. Some highlights now. Geneva and Tiffin on Fox Sports Pittsburgh. Thank you.
Geneva took the bus across the heartlands of Ohio Saturday. But when they arrived in Tippin, they climbed aboard Air Myers. Quarterback Justin Myers tossed a school record five touchdown passes to four different receivers. Myers' first TD toss was a stunning 84-yard bomb to Mike Holleran. He ensued with scoring passes to Vince Guido, Ken Clemensic, and Ron Michel to close out a robust first half. Myers wrapped up his record day with a 28-yard toss in the third quarter to Ron Michel for, you guessed it, a touchdown. On fourth and five, Myers back to throw, hits Michel down at the 15, Michel with the 10, five, into the end zone, touchdown, Juan Michel. Geneva's defense was nearly as flawless as Myers and the offense. Dan Gardner and Damon Moore each picked off tip and passes. while Jeff Meehock recorded three tackles for negative yardage. When Air Myers finally landed, the GTs had their eighth consecutive win, a 49 to 11 conquest of Tiffin. You know, wide open at the 30, makes the catch of the 25, flips the tackle. Down to the 20, 10, five, into the end zone, touchdown Geneva. Oh, brother. I got to be honest with you, I never get anything done on Saturdays because I'm so entranced listening to these things on the Geneva College Golden Tornado Radio Network. I love to listen to this football team. I wish I had some time to get out and watch this football team, but I had a chance a couple of weeks ago to see some of these seniors. And you have a lot of young kids that are doing some big things, but let's face it, uh, these seniors have been with you through some up and down times, and uh, they're getting their just rewards this year. And I think it's going to be pretty special this week against Urbana. Well, it's senior day for our 17 guys who have been with us from the beginning. And uh, I'll tell you, this class will always hold a special place in our hearts as coaches. They were the group that uh, really changed the face, as we said, of the football program at Geneva. Uh, these guys will go down in the record books as winning 81% of their game, which is quite remarkable. Um, also, when you look at the group as a whole, they, they come from, uh, they're mainly local kids, but, you know, uh, they've committed themselves to the task of, of turning around a program and, and giving it purpose and uh, making it nationally known. And, and like we said, the players in the locker room, Rob, are the ones that are getting it done. Very special group of players. Well, you know, you think about Ronnie Michelle, where he's come from, and you, you, th you think about some of these players that really, from Beaver County, of course, but, you know, I hear the name, and he's not a senior, of course, but I hear the name Timmy Dunkel. He's from Eastern Ohio, went to Beaver Local High School. So Geneva really has become a, a regional football team, and that's nice. Well, you know, we recruit within two hours of our campus, and we've really uh, brought that as an identifying factor of who we are. You know, in our conference, as we were talking about Davenport, Iowa, Tiffin, Ohio, uh, going out to places like that, we kind of represent uh, an hour and a half from Beaver Falls, so we stretch into Ohio, stretch into the Pittsburgh area, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you've got to win the recruiting wars in your backyard. We've done that, and uh, these 17 kids decided four years ago that they would come for a common purpose, and it's paid off. Well, for some of the young athletes that are still playing on the high school gridiron that are watching this show, and I know there's a number of them, especially in eastern Ohio, hypothetical situation, although I'm not big enough, but say I want to go to Geneva, and you come to me, why should I consider Geneva College? Well, I, I think that uh, when you look at a recruiting standpoint, the word fit is used. Uh, you want to try to make a fit uh, with 
the person you're recruiting and uh, make sure that they fit in the campus. Uh, we're a special place. We're a Christian school number one, committed to excellence uh, in the classroom and on the football field. Uh, it's a lot of work, Rob. It really is. I mean, our kids spend a lot of time studying. They spend a lot of time preparing for football. I think the word excellent best describes the type of player we're looking for. And um, the high school coaches probably are the guys that give us the best indication of the attitude of the individual. Let's talk about Urbana quickly and then, of course, the big one, Westminster. Well, Urbana comes in uh, and with a new coach. I just saw him on tape, and they played Walsh very, uh, very well. Uh, senior day, our kids got to go out and play well against an opponent that right now is struggling. But, you know, the great game of football, it's a team game, and you've got to go out every week. You've got to block, tackle, run, catch, and throw and, and do it well, or else, uh, you know, it could be disastrous. But I'm pretty confident that our guys will come out and uh, just play well. I mean, this is as big as Frazier Ali, Thriller in Manila. I mean, this is Westminster and Hudak at quarterback and Flora out of Newcastle and, of course, the GTs, but most importantly, the final time. Well, you know, I, I don't know uh, if it'll be the final time. I do know that uh, they've got an awful good football team, and uh, uh, we just uh, thankful for the opportunity to go up to New Wilmington and play, play them. And uh, I think everybody in western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, will be there, so I don't know how they're going to fit everybody. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of Tornado Watch 97. We'll see you back here on Fox Sports Pittsburgh in a couple of weeks. But before we say goodbye, we hope to say hello to all of you Saturday when the GTs host Urbana, 1.30 kickoff, and, of course, the final time for the seniors at Reeves Stadium. You will not want to miss it. And now for the coach, Gino DeMarco, I'm Rob Pratt. Until next time, thanks for joining us on Tornado Watch 97. So long, everybody.